without further ado, let us bring in Gary and Thorne, Nick Fryer, as well as Eric Halterman. Guys, great to see you. Of course, you are here to uh, cover our bases with a little segment that we like to call Cover the Bases. We're going to get into a little baseball talk with you and uh, find out your favorite DFS or sportsbook plays here for tonight's very busy slate. You got 15 games ahead. Nick, let's begin with you. DFS, favorite pitcher. All right, I'm going to start with Casey Mize tonight at 7.1K. I, like, I know that he's – with Casey Mize, he's a guy who's gotten a lot better, and I feel confident with him every time pretty much with his K props. But for DFS purposes, every game is like, am I sure? I, I don't know. But he continues to improve his swing and strike weight, rate. Uh, no Ben Intendi tonight for the Royals. Of course, he's injured. And anytime you get you take an important lefty out of an opposing lineup from Mize, that's going to make a difference. And in general, as much as I've liked the Royals' offense a lot lately, um, especially Salvador Perez – they're what they have one of the lower OPSs against right handed pitching over the last two weeks, and their ISO is sub 150 against righties during that time span, too. So, Casey Mize at 7.1k on a busy slate. I feel like he's somebody who could have a pretty decent night and then provide you some value. Gary and Andrew Benintendi injured. I mean, come on, that, that is something that has happened. I cannot this is shocking that fact. Um, I like Mize, I think Mize is definitely in that pool of pitchers for a, a solid SP2 tonight. Um, but I don't want to overcomplicate things. And for as big as this slate is, for as many pitching options as we have, the pitching is terrible tonight. And I know it's chalky to just say the most expensive guy is the best pitcher on this slate, but it's true on Tuesday. Trevor Rogers is the best pitcher on this slate at $10,000. He's got a 2.56 FIP so far this season. His strikeout rate is just a tick below 30% at 29.8%. And it's not just Rogers skill set that matters tonight. It's the fact that the Cardinals are free falling in the NL central standings and their offense has done absolutely nothing. The last two weeks, they actually have the fourth lowest isolated power and WRC plus in baseball across the past 14 days. So it's a really nice matchup for Rogers. He's going to be chalky. I understand that, but again, pitching is bad tonight and I will, I will take the high floor of Rogers and maybe experiment with some ceiling in my SP2 slot. From a pair of DraftKings contributors to the man from Roto-Wire, Eric, what do you think? Favorite DFS pitcher tonight? Yeah, I do love Rogers uh, as the highest paid guy finally getting his due there. I think he is for real. I think that's a, a very solid pick. But unlike Gary and I am going to overcomplicate things. And I'm going to go with Zach Eflin at 8400 and you might think it's getting a little bit too cute to throw somebody against the Dodgers. Uh, but this is a Dodgers team that's without Max Muncy, without Corey Seager, without Cody Bellinger, most likely. It sounded like they didn't expect him back uh, before Wednesday, if he even avoids the injured list at all. And it's in pitcher-friendly Dodger Stadium. And Eflin has been quite good uh, for the last couple of years now, really. 389 ERA this year could even be better. Uh, a lot of those ERA estimators have him in the low threes, FIP at 311, XFIP 321. Uh, pretty similar story to last year, actually, when he had a 397 ERA, uh, but both at FIP and XFIP were around 320, 340. Uh, last year, he broke out to suddenly start striking people out. Uh, before, he'd always been a very low walk, but also low strikeout guy. Last year, he struck out 28.6% of opposing batters. This year, it's sort of back down into the middle, but still above average at 24.7%. Although if you look over just his last six starts, uh, he's very close to last year's numbers at 27.9%, uh, while still avoiding walks, 3.3% uh, for the year. So it's not the best matchup, but again, the Dodgers aren't necessarily as loaded as they normally are. And Eflin, I think, has been pitching well to justify that second tier, mid-tier price. Eric, was that uh, Zach Efron? Close. Eflin. I just yeah, seemed too not, cute. I got confused. Yeah. Not Elton either. <laughs> All right. Let's go from first base to second base, and uh, we'll spin it back to Gary and over here and take a look at our favorite DFS hitter. Who you got? Well, I'm, I'm a little worried that this is going to become like a punchline because this is quickly becoming my catchphrase on the sweat. But – why is Nick Castellanos below $5,000? <laughs> I don't understand. It keeps happening, and he keeps doing really well against left-handed pitching. The last time I talked about this was on Friday when he was $4,800 against Kyle Freeland, and I was like, hey, why is Nick Castellanos below $5,000? And then he proceeded to hit a home run in the first inning because that's who Nick Castellanos is. He's got a 210 WRC plus against left-handed pitching so far this season. 
Brett Anderson is going for Milwaukee. He's got an 8.28 expected ERA. The last time the Reds faced Anderson last week, he gave up five runs in three innings of work. I think pretty much you can expect a similar script in this game. So I like a lot of Reds tonight, but Nick Castellanos is at the top of that stack at 4,900. Eric, who do you like? Yeah, I think Castellanos is a great play. I think the true answer is probably Vlad Jr. every single day for Mm -hmm. the rest of the season, but I just talked about him yesterday. Uh, So I'm going to mix things up and go with Francisco Lindor at 4,000, which is, as far as I can tell, the cheapest he's been all year. Uh, Obviously, he had a really terrible start to the season. Uh, I think heading into the year, people's expectations were too high for him. Uh, His WRC Plus last year was just 102, which suggests he was – barely better than a league average hitter uh, which obviously still makes him a great player given his defense at shortstop one of the most important defensive positions but i think people were overrating his bat heading into the air that said we shouldn't have expected him to be as bad as he was earlier this season but he's starting to turn things around over his last 15 games he's hitting 310 uh, with three homers and even if you factor the bad early stretch he's still not been quite as bad as his numbers suggest hitting 217 but the expected batting average of 241 is you know at least close to respectable similar story with a slugging 349 but an expected slugging just over 400 he's also walking more than he ever has in his career and while his 16.3 percent strikeout rate is a career worst that's still well better than league average Uh, so i don't think we're going to get lindor back up to the levels that many people expected him to be before the season Uh, but i think he's more than a four thousand dollar player so I like him at that price, uh, especially against Alec Mills, uh, whose ERA starts with the six and looks to be mostly deserved, given that he strikes out just 13.9% of opposing batters. Nick, who's your bat tonight? Look, I know Nick Castellanos is one of the best plays of the night, but I'm, I always get more excited about the value plays, trying to find that right exact one and someone that people may be sleeping on. And Kyle Seeger is absolutely someone I would expect people to sleep on. He's been Not great over his last 10 games, but still he's doing all right against left-handed pitching and his power has still been there against left-handed pitching over the last couple of weeks. Um, And he's going up against a guy in Jay Happ tonight. And Gary and and Eric both talked about it before, how there's a lot of bad pitching on this slate. And Happ is one of those guys who I like to target. And I know we're talking lefty on lefty. Happ's better against lefties. But Seager's a guy who hits left-handed pitchers well, and he's done well against Happ throughout his career. In 20 plate appearances, he's got three home runs and a career 103.7 OPS. So Kyle Seager at 3.4K. I think that's a great value to add tonight. All right. Well, we got first and second covered. Let's load up the bases and Eric, go back to you here. We need your favorite either run line or money line bet tonight. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Marlins over the Cardinals. Uh, They're at even odds plus 100 last I checked. And that's mostly uh, because Trevor Rogers, as Gary and talked about earlier, uh, I'm just all in on him. I've liked him since the beginning of the year, though. I didn't can't pretend that I expected this i didn't expect a 202 era but even last year in his seven start debut when his era was north of six uh, that xfip was at 367 because he struck out 30 percent of opposing batters uh, this year 29.8 percent, basically the same thing while trimming a bit off his walk rate hasn't given up more than three runs in any of his 13 starts and has given up three earned runs just once uh, so he's he's a legitimate top tier pitcher already uh, versus Kwang Hyung Kim, who had a 162 ERA last year, uh, but didn't look like he deserved it at all. Uh, the ERA estimator is way above that. XFIP had him at 452, uh, thanks in large part to his 15.6% strikeout rate. He does have that strikeout rate over 20% this year, but just barely and not necessarily elite in other areas. So I don't think that adds up to much more than a mid-rotation starter. So big, big uh the big advantage to Rogers there and the lineups are actually tied for 19th with a 92 WRC plus, which surprised me. I would have guessed the Cardinals were above by a bit. So when you get that big advantage uh, to Rogers with equal lineups, I think this is pretty clear Marlins. All right, Nick, what do you think? I'm going to go A's run line tonight against the Angels in part because I want to fade Haney after he's had a couple good starts and he can run into control issues at times. Um, And some of the A's hitters have good numbers against him and the A's in general 
are hitting well against left-handed pitching over the last couple of weeks are top 10 in OPS. But also, I want to get on the Frankie Montes train. I know if you look at, like, you know, just look at his ERA, that's going to push people away because he's got an ERA over four. But that's all because of April. He's been knocking that down progressively um, since the start of May. And I know he gave up four runs against the Angels last time, but those were all unearned runs. Um, and I understand for the sake of run line, money line doesn't necessarily count, but it, in the sense of, those runs are not on him. So I expect him to come out and perform a little bit better. And it's not like he faced them last time out. So there's been some space since he last saw them too. And he's been, um, I, I, so I want to get in on Frankie Montes. So that's what I'm going to do it tonight. We go on the uh, A's run line. Gary, and that leaves you, my friend. Yeah, maybe this is more of a stay away spot, but uh, I am not a smart man. So I am yeah. going to take the Pirates at plus 148 on the money line. Uh, this really just has a lot to do with the Nationals not being deserving of being as heavy favorites as they are tonight. The Nationals come into Tuesday's slate two and six in their last eight home games. They're one and four in their last five games as a favorite. The Nationals are not a good team, and Patrick Corbin has not been a good pitcher so far this season. He's got a 6.54 expected ERA, while Tyler Anderson hasn't been amazing, but he's been about league average. He's been dependable, and he's been one of the Pirates' best starters in 2021. He's got a 4.40 expected era so it seems like the pitching matchup leans i would say heavily towards the pirates and then you start looking at these two lineups yes the nationals have done pretty well against left-handed pitching so far this season the pirates have not however he brian hayes is back for the pirates and all he has done throughout his career is absolutely crush left-handed pitching brian reynolds hits left-handed pitching really well jacob stallings can hit lefties so i think the pirates can do enough on offense to get some runs off of the struggling patrick corbin and I think Tyler Anderson does enough to keep this game close. So I just think this line is way too lopsided, and I will take the plus money with the Pirates. One more here, and we begin with the uh, company man in the DraftKings hat. Garion, take us home with your favorite game total. I'm going to take the under eight and a half between Texas and Houston. Uh, Kyle Gibson has quietly been one of the best pitchers in the American League so far this season. That might say more about the American League than it does about Kyle Gibson. But 10 of his last 11 starts, he's allowed two earned runs or fewer, and two of those 10 starts were against the Astros. He's pitched really well against Houston in the recent past. So I think he can do enough to suppress Houston's offense where Texas just won't be able to pull their weight when it comes to going over this number. In June, Texas has the lowest isolated power and WRC plus in the American League. I think this is probably like a four to one game for Houston, something along those lines. So it doesn't get close to this number. Nick, I know you spent all morning examining, just pining over the DK sports book, looking for your favorite number here. What is it? Uh, I'm going to go with the giants over four and a half runs going up against Matt Peacock. And uh, look, that last time they faced him, they got him, they racked him for what, 10 hits and the giants are top 10 in OPS against right-handed pitching over the last couple of weeks. Uh, so I, I'm just going to keep it short and simple. I mean, that's to me. And they, oh, actually, you know what the other point was too, they just faced Peacock. That was the, his last time out was against the giants. And I'm always all about going up against those pitchers that if they're middle of the road, not frontline guys, it, it has done well for me throughout the season. So I'm always open to those kind of bets um, on run total. So I'm going with uh, the Giants scoring over four and a half against uh, Peacock tonight. Eric, however long this segment lasts, it is now up to you. What do you have? I have a three hour soliloquy. On why <laughs> this is a filibuster. Taking, exactly. Why, why I'm taking the Phillies Dodgers under. Uh, touched on Zach Eflin earlier, how he went from a guy who didn't strike anybody out and didn't walk anybody to a guy who still doesn't walk anybody but strikes out plenty of guys. Uh, I think if I like Zach, uh, Zach Eflin, I have to like the under here, uh, which is set at eight and a half, which is about a run lower than the two teams have averaged combined on the season. But again, if I like Eflin, I also really like Julio Urias. Uh, who's actually pretty similar. He's got a 27.6% strikeout rate against just a 3.6% walk rate. And just like Eflin, he used to be a guy who didn't strike out a ton of guys, uh, just 23.2% up until or through the end of last year. And in last year alone, it was just 20.1% strikeout rate. Uh, but this year, uh, he's doing it all in much a similar way to Zach Eflin. So I think with those two pitchers, if I like them both, it's a fairly pitcher-friendly park. I think we're not going to see a ton of runs here, despite the fact that both teams do have at least a few big bats. 